friends, this is Yarn Hellions episode, no, episode, wait. <laughs> That's a good 10 seconds. <laughs> this is <laughs> Yarn Hellions season two, episode 31. I'm Christine Parker of Christine Parker Co. This is Sarah Flynn of Superfine Yarn Co. This is Grandma Dottie. Uh, she is our current summer uh, co-host because it's too hot to record in Sarah's studio. So Ripley is uh, on sabbatical until we reconvene in the fall at the Hildebrandt building. Uh, we have so much to talk about uh, this episode. We are we're running a little late with our recording this month because a bunch of stuff happened and life and we just had to like pause for a couple weeks and so we're back we are going to talk about um the great lakes fiber show which was this past memorial day we had so much fun that was in worcester ohio um so we'll talk about that uh we we might rage a little bit about the recent roe versus wade overturning in the supreme court uh we're like not going to go into it, but we are mad. <laughs> and that's all that we have to say about that, unless you have anything you'd like to add. Any choice swear words? Not at this time. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, um, what's, what's been going on with you, Sarah? Um... I feel like just I have all these little yarn things written down, but I think I know. we can just get talk about row a little bit and just okay. I kind of all consuming because it just happened the, uh, Friday two days ago. Yeah, um, and it's just but it's, it's bad news. Bad news for uterus havers all over the country. And not only that, that it's just a the start of things to come for all the kinds of people. Yes, that's what's so scary to me is like, okay, if they're going to come for abortion rights, what's next? It's, yeah. It's really scary. Um, so. I, I am, um, by the time you guys watch this, I will have um, a new sticker in my shop. I'm making a, like a pro-abortion uh, sticker to, I'm going to donate all the profits to um, who Ohio, who is women have options. And it's like a, um, an abortion fund for women in Ohio, uterus havers in Ohio. Uh, so I'll put the link in the um, show notes. You can go check it out uh, there. Yeah. Get a sticker and donate to the abortion funds. Cause they're going to need it. The money, the money, they're going to need the money, the funds. Yeah. And Planned Parenthood is like getting everything. So lots of people are donating to Planned Parenthood, which is great, but there's other pl yeah, places to donate to. So. so if you're mad, we're with you. And if you're not mad, what are you doing here? <laughs> Anything else on that topic? No, just still kind of shocked and... Yeah. Yeah. So I think it just is going to take a while to fully, fully process. Yeah. I see your notes say you've been drinking so much tea so in all much caps. Tea in all caps. So it was a more <laughs> fun topic. Yeah. I have been blending my own tea. Then I got into ordering like um, these like special like different green teas from little farms in China and. I went and got like a little, it's like, it's called a gaiwan. It's a little teeny, um, like steeper that has a little lid and you get a little teen cup and then you just, it seems so silly when you start it. Cause I'm used to drinking like mugs of tea, mm. but the nice thing is I got like a little electric kettle and then you just have hot tea for like two hours. So you pour a little oh. bit in and, um, you let it like steep in this little thing. And then the only trick is you kind of have to like learn how to hold the lid and pour it. You go like huh. this and like pour it and in little baby cups but it's nice because it never gets cold it's just always you're awesome. always like refreshing it and then like one little batch of like leaves you get like 10 15 cups or however much how you know 
how weak you like to drink. And yeah. Keep, keep going. And so that's been really fun. So I'm nerding out about that. And then we're reading much more about like herbs and their properties and like, you know, mixed, how mixing different things together. Um, oh my gosh. Know, different effects. Like and witchcraft. It's very, <laughs> very interesting. I just um, cool. have been really into it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then I've been doing, I have ball jars with these. I got these, um, like lids because I used to do like overnight oats but I started um doing overnight tea like Mm. sun tea but not it's just in your fridge overnight and Mm. you could just make it with cold water you put for a like a regular like canning ball jar you do like I just eyeball it but Mm -hmm. I do like six grams of loose leaf tea leave it overnight strain it in the morning take it to work it's like magic Mm. like cold brew yeah Yeah. okay cool so it's been awesome so ask me anything about tea drinking it's so much fun it's just and it's not you know it's like like uh, now that i'm kind of like reading about it and watching little like youtube clips like mm-hmm. people almost treat it like wine taste you know it's, it's like this has oh. bitter notes and this has there's like youtube tea guys mm-hmm. who like are like this is the fresh green harvest of 2012 and you know are <laughs> yeah. like whatever there's all these like how much you roast <laughs> it and this and that so it's really cool it's like i can't wow. drink wine but now i can like have yeah. some like tasting notes about you can be a tea snob certain, i know i already am a tea <laughs> snob so watch out so um and if you're in cleveland the tea lab is really great there's one downtown and there's one in lakewood um they just have canisters along the wall and you can walk in and talk to them about what you like and they oh, recommend cool. things and they have everything so i'd say right now my favorite is white tea it's silver needle this is a little <laughs> leaf, like almost not fluffy but like Little slick strands that look like needles, and it's delicious. Um, so, and then, you know, if it, I've been reading a lot and like watching TV, I think is kind of a good way to escape and just like not yes. be angry all day. So, what we do in the shadow, mm-hmm. the scene started, and it's yep. so just dumb and fun, and you will love the characters. So, yeah, it is. It is dumb and fun. Like that's <sighs> a great way to put it it's like um so what we do in the shadows it's on hulu it's um like a mockumentary sort of like the office or parks and rec but it follows these three vampires and they're familiar uh and they like just do long island Uh, rhode island no staten island staten island staten island (laughs) one of the islands yeah uh and they yeah they're like awkward and it's just really funny um and they're like 20 minute episodes and you know so you can like binge through a bunch of them we had been watching devin and i my husband devin and i have been watching buffy the vampire slayer from the 90s um and this was our this is his second rewatch my third rewatch but we got to the episode spoilers uh spoilers on a 25 year old show buffy's mom dies and it's really really sad uh and th- those episodes are so hard and i'm like i can't do this right now i can't watch joyce did you die skip them or did you turn it off we just stopped yeah like i'm like i have to watch something else like i need something mindless and i remember in a previous episode you had told me about what you do in the shadows and i'm like or what we do in the shadows yeah. i'm like let's watch this other hilarious vampire show. So we started and it's really good. So if you need some like dumb escape. And I have one more for you, which I'm rewatching. Well, only, I'm sorry. What we do in the shadows, their new season um, four is July 12th. Yes. Yeah. You need to catch up before then. But if you do, I'm so excited about that. (laughs) Only Murders in the Building is my other comfort show. And it's Steve Martin, Selena Gomez and Martin Short. And it's not as lighthearted because there's murders and, it's just everything I I wanted in a show and didn't quite know. It's just silly and it's, it's not exactly fun. It's just, it's like a, such a mashup of like so many different mm. genres and they're all really good. I, I'm too old to know like about Selena Gomez. <laughs> she is so good in this. And then I started watching her cooking show on HBO because of this, where during the pandemic, she's like, I'm at home. I want to learn how to cook. So she just gets like, uh, like she, um, they get like different chefs to like teach her like certain, oh, like be- kind of basic cooking stuff, mm-hmm. like, um, so how to cook a steak properly. And so it's 
really good. So cooking is hard. Cooking is hard. So um, and you can kind of appreciate that she's. It's not like this high level, you know. She's mm-hmm. like. I don't know how to do this. So um, that I sounds way that. more useful than like, so you know, useful. the stuff on like Food Network or whatever, yeah, where like it's like I'm these never master chefs and they have like all these weird ingredients that you've never heard of and can't get at Aldi. And like, you know, it's how am I going to I don't have a copper freaking Dutch oven or whatever the hell. Like, yeah, the best thing is, um, well, all the chefs are kind of home for the pandemic, too. And then they pick like what they think, like a beginner should learn mm-hmm. so that's nice so even though they're fancy chefs it's like okay you need to know how to do this basic and skills then her grandparents are there for part of it staying oh. with her and they'll like walk in like if she can't open a jar like the grandpa will walk in and help her open <laughs> it's like it's very charming so is it anyway. on where's what what's it's it on, on hbo okay which um but uh and um oh my gosh chef selena and chef is what it's called so Cute. You chance, give that a watch um. So those are my two main okay. plugs. If you um, hear uh, if you hear some snuffling and snoring, it's Grandma Dottie. She's on the pillow right here, and she's conked out. <laughs> she snores like an old man. Um. So and then I have some yarn dates coming up. Um. If you're able, um. To join us, um, I actually, we have a joint event at Around the Table Yarns on August 13th. So come visit us. We're go- both going to be selling our stuff and s- sitting around and knitting, I'm sure, and chatting. Mm-hmm. So come visit. I'll have, yeah, merch. I'm going to have mugs and t-shirts and uh, pins and stickers and all that good stuff. And then um, for me, I'm going to be at Harps and Thistles. This will be my first time going to Harps and Thistles, definitely on July 16th. And then we have to set the dates. I know a while ago she had asked, you know, maybe if I would leave the trunk show with her for a few days, but um, I'll definitely be there on the 16th. September 17th is the Wool Gathering in Yellow Springs. And then I'm very excited. Um, They haven't posted. I'm on their site, but they haven't posted about it specifically yet is um, I got into Wool and Folk. Oh, cool. In, um, that's outside of Rhinebeck, a show that's outside of Rhinebeck the day before on October 14th. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, actually Rosie Rose of Rosie Posey Bags asked me to split a booth with her and I hadn't Ooh. even thought, oh, this is something I could do. Mm-hmm. Um, I had kind of heard of Cake Wool and I'd sent them a email like last year, like, oh, maybe I'll want to come this year. And then, um, yeah, Rose got it all kind of organized. So that's fun. excellent. Yeah. So. I'm so bummed I can't go to Rhinebeck <laughs> this year. My sister-in-law, Dev, my husband Devin's sister, is getting married that weekend, and I'm I'm the matron of honor. So like I can't skip it. <laughs> I I know when you I did like text like oh my god you want to come to New York with me <gasps> and I'm like yes yes and then I gotta put oh, it on my calendar and like, oh shit. <laughs> Next year for sure. Yes, yes. So, um, and it's really exciting. So there's lots of vendors. And then there's, they also, right after I got my acceptance, they are having like a podcaster's patio. So um, oh. grocery girls are coming. Oh my goodness. And needles at the ready. Oh so my gosh. That's so fun. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be great. I feel like I remember last year, Shelly Can talking a lot about Swan Folk. We'll like be there. Yeah. yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's and like, then the property it's on has little teeny cabins that are on the Hudson River. So I got a cute. Cabin, so I'm very excited. Oh, that'll be really yeah. fun. Oh, I hate you. I'm so <laughs> jealous. <laughs> I'll scope it out and then we can go next year. Okay. okay. Um, so you want to talk about um, Great Lakes? I we do. have so much yarn. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to have to it's a through. It's a yarn haul uh, episode. Yes. Because I went down... So, uh, Great Lakes Fiber Show is in Wooster, Ohio. It's Memorial Day weekend every year. Um, and Sarah had a booth this year. So I was like, hey, do you need any help? I, like, I can come down and help you. Um, so I went down all day on Sunday uh, to be her booth minion um, and sell yarn and uh, drink iced coffee and knit and squish all the yarn. There were so many cool um booths there so like the first great lakes i went to like eight or ten years ago 
was like all right but it was like there wasn't that much cool like there weren't that many cool there, it was like a lot of fiber there's new vendors every year yeah, yeah. it was a lot of like, like five years fiber and spinning and like not bright fun colors really there was like maybe one or two booths that had like really cool yarn um but now it's like every single booth is so cool like there's tons of indie dyers like sarah's there and um leading meant fiber arts dye mad yarns was there tina uh, this year twisted. tina's twisted fibers who she is just a delight she, i knew it like her <laughs> yeah. um created for you by laura uh-huh um my friend cat from why not fibers in michigan this is mm -hmm. her first year there so it was really nice to have fiber seed is i yeah. love i was really excited to see fiber seed um yeah, just like there's just so many. That's not even like. There yeah. were over a hundred vendors there this year. They sold out. One, two, three, four, five buildings. Yeah, yeah. The, it was crazy. So if you get a chance, if you're in the Ohio area, go to in uh, Memorial Day next year. Go to. And I paid for my booth next year, so yeah, I will be there. <laughs> um, so what? What do you have? I don't even think we showed each other all the stuff that we bought. I know, I know. I And I don't remember what I bought on Saturday or Sunday, so you'll <laughs> yeah. just, you might be surprised, you might not. I was surprised. I was, I like went to get all my, like find all my yarn. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't, I don't even remember like buying this. This is it's like so exciting. Like a surprise a yeah. month later. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to show you. Okay, so leading men, um, they had really cute 50 gram skeins and they were packaged like this I, I told you i was like let's go down and look at their yes room. so they had them like hanging like this and it was just so cool i got some so of those I got too this um i don't know how you can see it it's pretty good so like black pink uh neon yellow i'm just i oh. cannot wait to make some socks i thinking socks but of course i love I have, these a half a sock I've had on, yeah, four, hmm, eight, four, four months at least, six months. Who knows? But you got some too. I got some I too. Told you to go. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, go look. I like I had no plan, like no plan. I'm just like these made my eyeballs happy. It's like, let's see, there it is. Um, sort of green like olive green with uh Almost mint mindy. and like mauve and dark gray and some dark turquoise speckles am i getting it there we go yeah really pretty and then i got a um matching mini skein because i'm like i'm gonna make socks with little contrast so toesies i love mint is it phillips maybe there was just a thud. It's like a scratching. Oh yeah, it's okay. The scratching, yes. Phyllis is in her house, her crate, and she's not allowed to have bedding because she pees on it. So it's just like the bare plastic tray in the bottom, but she still like will try to fluff it up and so she'll scratch on the, on the bottom of the That's plastic tray. Cute. It's really cute and we'll just like hear her fluffing up her nothing bed in the middle of the night. <laughs> really sort of sad she likes it in there though she'll like go and hang out in her on her plastic tray in her crate in my office during the day with the door open um we've been having some issues with a little bit of aggression from miss phil's fans uh snarling at poor grandma dudes if grandma dudes gets too close to phyllis's favorite bed um so currently we have taken all of the beds away the dog beds so there's nowhere soft for anyone to lay except for a comfy mountain. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's cold. What a good girl. And I didn't say, I'm sorry, this is neon pencil. Oh yeah, we should say the color. Realized. Neon pencil? Yeah. Oh yeah, fun. Um, mine, the green is metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. And then the minty one is honeydew. Uh, Those are both leading men fiber arts. I got a Shirsty Cat design, um, just stock in Amorphous. Yeah, Metamorphosis Ooh. and Amorphous. But this has every color I really love. Yeah. So, yeah, a little purple, a little green, some little speckles. Um, like, look at, like, ooh, that part up there has everything. There's it's an orange really, in there. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. 
love it. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with it, um, but I, yeah. It's dangerous going to a fiber show, like, just like it's dangerous going to a yarn shop where you're like, if you have no plan, and even if you do have a plan, you're like, oh my God, this is so pretty. I have to have it or I'll die. Like, and then you just come home with $400 worth of yarn. Not really, but close. Uh, and then you're like, I don't even have time to knit this. <laughs> what, what, I, why did I buy this? And that's why we end up with mountains of stash. Yes. Did you get any um, Dynad yarns? I did not. I know you did last year. Because I did at Pittsburgh last year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I got some. Well, you did. I sure did. So sh so Kelly of Dymad Yarns is doing her um, like small town Ohio festivals collection this summer. Um, and this one is Melon Festival. So the Milan Melon Festival is, Milan is outside of Sandusky, Ohio. Um, it is a little town famous for being the birthplace of Thomas Edison. And also my in-laws live there. Uh, so every summer um, that I have been married, we go to the, the Milan Melon Festival and we eat melon ice cream. Um, and we get mad at the lines for the rides and how hot it is and how noisy. And then we get cranky and we go home. Um, but the this yarn is the is inspired by the Melon Festival, and so my husband, without telling, when I got home from the Great Lakes Fiber Show, without telling him what this yarn was, I handed it to him. I was like, "Oh, look, isn't this cool?" He's like, "Wow, this reminds me of the Milan Melon Festival," and I was like, "Well, that's hilarious wow. because that's what it's called." So um, yeah, go check out Kelly's uh, Dye Mad Dye Mad Yarns Melon Festival colorway. And if you're in Ohio, go check out the Melon Festival. It's the weekend before Labor Day at the end of the summer. So um, I will be there, but probably not in the crowds because I get mad. But if if I do go, you will find me at the ice cream stall. Um, I was walking around looking for dyers that I didn't know and were new to me. Um, and... But did you dye yarns? And her uh, logo is a uh, little sheep lifting a <laughs> barbell. Oh, Oops. put it a little bit there. Uh, and <laughs> it's like, got, like, do you lift, bro? I know. That's really cute. Even? So like Minty with tons of speckles. And then checking out. And of course, like right by the checkout, there's this little... Um, it's called a mini gym locker. Oh my god. And so you can clip it on anything and it has a little zipper and it's like a little cute, but you For can your keep little, your little notions. Ooh, your little notions. That's so cute. I know. So this is you're coming home with me. So it's super cute. I don't know. Can I see the speckled yeah. one again? Oh yeah. How like these speckles are so evenly distributed. How it's a, it, it doesn't just happen. Let me say that. Yeah. So it takes either like two rounds of dyeing because yeah, you need them. And you also either need to like, well, have some technique I don't know about or like have them, you know, lay it out enough where you can get that much like coverage speckles. It's no like, small yeah, feet. yeah. That's why I was like, oh, you're so pretty. That's so pretty. Yeah. Um... Did you get fiber seed? I didn't because I had bought some in Pittsburgh as well. Okay. I was trying to expand. Oh my gosh. Well, I did. I oh. got fiber seed. I didn't even mean to. And then that thing happened where I'm like walking in their booth and admiring the pretty colors. And then this one just like screamed at me. And I was like, oh, and I had to buy it. So it's, um, I really like, I think it's really cool the way fiber seed has their, their um, their booth is awesome. And it seems like every colorway has like additional like techniques. So there's like, there will be like a solid and a matching semi-solid and a variegated and a speckled and a self-striping. Like it's just, I don't know how they keep track of all that stuff. Um, but this is, so I got the, the purple is called ultraviolet. And then the variegated is Cosmic Wave. 
And do you have a plan or they were just pretty? They both. Okay. I think I'm going to make um, a, a match and move shawl. By Match and move is by Martina Bem. Um, it's like all garter stitch uh, and stripes, like big, wide, um, like chevron stripes. So I think that might be fun. Awesome. And I just remembered by you saying that last year when you came down to Great Lakes, you really didn't buy much because nothing was jumping out at you. So I don't you had think a I bought experience anything. experience this year, yeah. Yeah, I, I... I don't think you did. Yeah, so if we even it out between two years, I think I uh, showed excellent restraint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I so... In two and a half weeks, Devin and I are going on a road rally. Um, it's the 24 Hours of Lemons uh, Rust Belt Ramble. And it's this road rally. It's a race in a crappy car. You have to have your car has to be worth less than five hundred dollars. You have to take a crappy car from Detroit uh, all the way around Lake Erie and up into Buffalo, New York. So we'll be going in four one, two, three, four states, across four states, in our crappy 1982 Dodge Rampage, which is the ugliest. It's so ugly, oh my God. Um, but I'm like, I'm gonna be in the car for three days. I'm gonna have a lot of time to knit, so I think I might cast this on, this the match and move shawl. Have you made it before? Yes, okay. at least twice. Uh -huh. You know I stick to like I'll make I make yeah. the same stuff all the time. Is that it? Do I have anything else? Do you have any other I, Great do Lakes? You, yarn? I do. I do. Um, I've got a created for you by Laura, and I don't think I'm trying to think if I had bought her yarn before, and I was. I think I tried at um. Wool gathering last year and it just didn't happen. <laughs> so, um, but I bought a different kind of base for me at least. Um, it's um, fingering weight, but it's fifty percent alpaca, twenty five silk, twenty five linen. Oh, so and then it just a nice. It looks shade. like it's soft. Yeah, I feel it. Oh, so dang. and then I walked past Cat of why not after I bought it and she said, um, "Oh, you could just do like a tank top out of it and it's like really light and summery." And Ooh. I was like, oh, "Okay, so I'm gonna." Think about that. It's really interesting the way the light It's hits. really sheer, yeah. Yeah, it's like, sh it's like, sh like shiny almost. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the silk. But like the, and it's like mint, but it like almost shines like, I want to say brown, but like not. It's like maybe there's, um. yeah, I kind or of like, me. a little bit like, t like tan on your Yeah. Finger. It's it's I, you're it's never gonna show up in the uh, camera, but it's real pretty, and that's created for you by Laura. Yarns hand dyed in Ohio and Florida. Cool. Um, I have one more. I've got two more. So okay. Go I got some uh -huh. super fine yarn co. I got. You know, whenever there's green, green or yellow, I'm like, ah, I love it. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Grandma Dudes. <laughs> uh, so I, Sarah had four skeins of this colorway and then somebody bought one and I'm like, I have to uh -oh. get the rest uh, cause I love it. So this one is called Lime and it's on Euclid Sparkle Sock and it's sparkly. Mm. Can we, <laughs> it's good. I don't know what I'm going to make. I don't have a plan. The brights all sold really well. I don't know if it was like the beginning of summer or I had like a coral. I'll show you guys later. And it was the first thing to sell. Oh, sorry. It's empty. Um, I, so that was I had bought a mid mitten designs before at, um, Ann Arbor last year. And then I, st I stopped and um, chatted with her on Sunday and just like, oh yeah. And then she showed me this. I was like, okay, I'm, I'll be back. And I went back <laughs> to buy it. So what it is, um, she had talked to somebody who like designed fabric. I don't know if it was spoon flower or what it was. She's like, you know what I need is this. And then she showed me. So it's a four pack and it, it's kind of 
hard to see now. So there's two more on here, but it's tells you which is your main color and like your extra it's color. So this, this says one. main color background. That is so, so smart. I'm doing a stripey shawl with two colors. And so this is my contrast color, color A. Oh my god! And gosh. then there's a color B and color C that I still have. I that was like, brilliant. so this is like great. So for two, you don't need it as much, but like for like a four color shawl. Yeah. Like, whew. So um, I think that was so cool. I tried, I think that was the one time I tried to just go get like something to eat without taking extra money <laughs> yeah. with me and, um, and that didn't work out because I had to go back and get money and go back and buy it. Uh, well then... Oh, I got one. No, more. I Sorry. got No, go ahead. Oh, um, and Tina, who was catty corner, so I got to like catch up with her. Tina's twisted. Poor fiber. Tina, who got stuck in the booth for the Republican Party of Wooster County or whatever, like that. <laughs> so just like her poor booth, it was in the grandstand, which they must use for like. They used like the county fair, so like people buy. Like I was in the Remax one, which had like a little house, so they must each year have the same yeah. booth. But yeah, it was like. Poor Tina, stuck in the Republican. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She tried. I think I heard she tried to trade, and no one would trade with her. <laughs> Sad. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm trying to find the color, and I can't read. Forest fairy, and this is um 100% super wash merino. Um, fingering weight. 490 yards, mm. but it's a little like deeper colors. So like. Um, is that DK? Look. It's not. It's fingering. Oh. But, yeah. But, it, yeah. Okay. Um, blues, greens, purples. Even, like, a, that's pretty. That's, like, that's like, super dark forest green mm -hmm. edging almost to, like, That's cool. Black. Yeah. It's very goth. Mm-hmm. So that's all my haul. So my brain was taken up so much by prepping for Great Lakes and twisting and no matter how much, and I've sworn to myself for next year, each year I try and make prep a little bit easier on myself and just with, it's, it's, it's difficult. And I'm trying to not just work myself to the bone all the time. It's like a novel idea to like <laughs> yeah. give myself rest and you don't need to work every minute of the two weeks leading up to a show. And if you bring less yarn, if you, you know, this or that. It, it doesn't matter. It's and all to okay. tell yourself. That. So actively working on this. So, um, which I did okay, but I still, the weekend before decided I'm going to dye <laughs> all new colors the weekend before. So that means I was twisting and skein, um, labeling like Thursday. So luckily I ended up taking Thursday and Friday as vacation days, taking my time, got down, got it set up, got back. Realize the only thing I have is my advent brioche shawl. And you're mm. not going to be knitting that and talking to people at the same right. time. So, uh, Christine, I have I had a new color I really wanted to do, like something stripey. I was like, can you just send me <laughs> anything you've already knit that you know is easy that's stripey? And she sent me this. And it's perfect. And this is a stripe study. Um, and how do you say her name? I think it's Vera v Where is it? Vera Valamaki. That's okay. I'm sure I'm like American. No, it's okay. I it, but I know. Um, and it's perfect because you just go back. It's just um, short rows, and mm -hmm. you just like are each time I'm doing like the coral color. You're just going. Yeah, pretty much. You're just adding mm -hmm. like each time. It's love it. Don't need to look at anything. It's it's great. And then you just do one row of the other color in between. This one's called Stripe Study, the Stripe yes. Study Shawl. And I love it, and it's great, and it's mindless, and I need one of those at all times, so yeah. thank you for that. Because you are so welcome. I would not have been able to <laughs> pick it out on Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fun one to wear, too, when it's done, because okay. it's like an asymmetrical triangle, and it's all garter stitch, so it's just, just throw it on, and it's squishy, and it's good. Nice. Love um, that coral. Yeah, and um, I think on, I had had dyed it just for the show, and then I was like, I really like that. So I grabbed one, and then the other three sold. So oh, nice. Yeah. So the brights did really well. 
So I love that. And then since last I did a little more on my brioche adventure. And, oh, I'm in the middle of the row, which is a bummer, but nice to be able to see it. Oh, that's fun. So fun. And I got, oh, I got up to two. So you can see like purples and then I'm in these little peaches now and then it's going to go to yellows next. Cute. But. Gosh, I just love brioche. Yeah, it's super squishy, squishy. <gasps> super squishy. Because you're doing every row. Twice, yeah. Which takes forever. Ooh. But, um, and then I kept, I think this was Needles at the Ready, and I'd gotten this app to do, like, the PDF because I would be at work or be somewhere and not either have the pattern or, so I finally did get it together and I used Good Notes. Hmm. And then I, let me see what's in here. Um, I do like little, like I, you can download the PDF into it and mm -hmm. then I just, um, like I keep track that way. You can do like a little dot with like a highlighter. So mm -hmm. I keep, and it's so nice because then if I'm just on my phone somewhere, I can be like, oh, I'm on row seven. Yeah. I do that too, except I use, um, uh, notability app. Okay. It's like the same thing. They it's... both cost the same. They do the same thing. They just like. It's, I don't know why I didn't do it years ago. I'm always like, and then I'm always like, it's kind of sad. I'm always like trying out, trying to figure out like when, where am I going to print this? Mm -hmm. like, so, um, so much easier. So those are my two, but I feel I, and I have a bunch of stuff I'm not working on. Yeah. Oh, it's same. It's not happening. I, um, I was working on the outline tee by Jesse May. Mm -hmm. It's just like a plain, like a really simple, uh, stockinette loose fitting like relaxed fit t-shirt uh crop t-shirt um and i'm making mine in um knit picks lindy chain and i have like most of the body done so i'm like ready to split for the side the uh sleeves but i then had to like drop everything to make a uh, design a shawl like really fast so um i'm doing the uh yarn discovery tour pattern for around the table yarns again so there will be a new pattern that you can get from them um in september featuring sarah's yarn it'll be two skeins of dk um it's just a uh simple triangle shawl garter stitch with some fun lace um and I just finished it like last week and now I have to get testers and get it edited. And then uh, it's due in like <laughs> two weeks. So that is, it's gonna be a wild ride, but I can't, oh, and I can't show you because it's top secret until September, um, but it'll be, it'll be fun. I really, I'm I did excited. the pattern for them last year and it was really fun. I'm excited they asked again. Ooh, I can show you my project bag that I've been carrying it around in though. Oh, it's like Pyrex. It's TV. Pyrex. Vintage Pyrex. This is a bag um, from Republica Unicornia, who I just love to pieces. And bless her heart, she's a human and makes a limited amount of bags because she's a human, not a machine. And, and so, like, she's the type of, like, popular artist where her stuff, like, if you don't get it, if you don't make your purchase, like, in the first two minutes after it becomes available, like, it'll disappear. So I managed to snag one. I was really excited. You have to like sit, set a bunch of alarms and like prep your cart ahead of time and then just like keep refreshing and keep refreshing <laughs> till you, uh, till you can get it. It's worth it though. It's worth the stress. Her bags are awesome. We have merch, our own merch to show you. Oh. Sarah's got yarn. I've got flair. So I've got, um, Trying to tidy it up. Um, I've got um, this is a sparkle sock one. Um, and like Uhura Star Trek. Mm. Um, so and then I just it's hard to see the sparkles, but it's like a nice blend of reds. That's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's like brick. Yeah. And there's like a few different in there. So and then I have an entice sock, which is the regular sock. Um, and this one is Nebula. It's kind of spacey and pretty. Blues and pinks. That reminds me of like 
the galaxy uh like art that you'll see where it's yeah like yeah. yeah so and then um i'm really liking i um died enough to start a sweater in this base and um i really like it it's walton worsted mm-hmm. it's kind of the newer base um and uh this one is intrigue it's like a green blend very earthy mm-hmm. so what do i have we're like right on the cusp of months so we're currently we're in june so we are wrapping up Dottie, keep it down we're wrapping up um for kick-ass flare club we're wrapping up the uh second quarter of 2022 the theme was sweet treats so the last month is uh, the last sweet treat is ice cream here is the sticker can i is it in focus i hate this part i always feel dumb there we go um it says i scream you scream we all scream into the void and it's just i can't even like this one is so perfectly timed with the stuff that like all the political news that's happening right now and just everything seems like just so overwhelming and i just want to stand in the middle of a cornfield and scream uh so if that's you too you can um here's a sticker in the patch um you can join my patreon during the month of june pick your tier there's a pin a patch and a sticker um you can get one you can get two you can get all three mix and match whatever you want here's the pin god damn it (laughs) well it's a pin and it looks like a pin and it's got ice cream on it. So that so that's uh, June, and then July starts a new theme, which is dinosaurs, and I'm so excited. Oh, do you want to see this, by the way? Yes, I do. There you oh. go. So the first dinosaur is uh, the Stegosaurus, and he's awkward. And this, come on. Usually focus. Yeah, focus. there we go. The. Uh, the dinosaur he's the awkward stegosaurus how fucking cute is that this is a sticker here's the embroidered iron-on patch and here's the little pin they bring me so much joy this is my favorite part of my whole job so if you are like hey i want to support christine what's the best way to do that it's patreon that's the best the best way it helps me like having that expected income every month is huge um and then i have some other bonus stuff this will be available um so i'm cruel and i'm making it patron only this stuff will be in the secret shop um there's a new pin it's a lollipop and it says see you in hell and then there's uh, the, I have keychain, I got keychains made of the ice cream screaming into the void because I had a coupon. I only have eight of these. They're in the secret shop. If you're a patron, you will need the password. Uh, and don't forget to use your coupon, your super secret Patreon exclusive coupon. Thank you. These are all so cute. Thanks. So what's the, how long is, um? so like how long will dinosaurs be? Is it like? Uh, it's quarterly. quarterly. Yeah, the theme okay. changes quarterly, so the next nice. three months. So we'll have dinosaurs for July, August, and September. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So cute. I forgot to mention, um, I have a new yarn club. Yay! Um, Quincy's Yarn Club and Christine joined. Yay! So, um, the first ones are shipping out next week, um, but if you didn't get in on that, um, if you order by, um, the end of July... You'll be signed up for, um, I'll work on them during August and you'll, um, get shipped September's color. So it's always like a month ahead. Mm -hmm. So it gives me time to play. Yeah. That's how I do the, I think that's how I'm doing the the flare club where it's like, 
if you let me think if you get billed for the month of june you receive the june flare but you don't get it until july okay yeah so, so. yeah subscriptions are confusing they're like yeah, they're hard like, to yeah it's automated on the site so you have, kind of have to go with what yeah but they're yeah i imagine that like for mm. you too having that like income that you're expecting every month you yeah. know how much to expect you know you know that it will be coming yeah that it helps nice you plan it helps makers yeah yeah so I'm trying to get more signups i signed up i'm so excited i love i have like a problem with the subscription services because i'll be like like i'll sign up and you know be real excited and then forget about it and then i'll get presents in <laughs> like you know i signed up for um a bunch of pin uh pin clubs nice. subscription pin clubs and and promptly forgot about them and then so like every month i'm getting all these cool pins and now i have so many pins i don't know what to do with and now i'm gonna get yarn too and it's like it's like it's your birthday surprise here's some some presents that you bought yourself oh i wanted to mention too i'm doing two collaborations this year with indie dyers yarn dyers one of them uh this is for their holiday boxes one is the wool and vinyl um uh advent box i'm doing an exclusive pin and sticker uh for rachel so if you haven't yet go get her go sign up for her advent box um and then i'm also doing the um some stitch markers and a super secret special extra gift for the Ken Yarn um, holiday box. It's, the Ken Yarn one is based on, the theme is Willie, like uh, the 1962 Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory uh, movie. So it's like bright and psychedelic and trippy. So um, those goodies will be in the, um, the holiday boxes. I'm really excited about nice. those, yeah. And it seems like everyone did theirs super early this super year early. so i'm still working on mine i'm waiting for some of the artwork um but yeah like i, I had a few people message like oh hey are you doing yours mm. because i was gonna wait and yeah i did mine in august of last year and then like people have already like done theirs and closed them so I'm like okay so i'm gonna shoot for that uh, like in july but yeah i'm like i guess next year I still and it's nice because of summer it's since it's like a seasonal kind of business summer is always a little slower so it's nice mm -hmm. to get like the um the pre-orders in the summer mm -hmm. and it gives you more time to plan and get things together yeah yeah well it's so much work like so and like so like for me just even designing a pin you know, it takes me, say, like two weeks to get the like the brainstorming and the, you know, drawing up the sketches and then designing it, whatever. And then like we email back and forth and, you know, like Rachel had to approve the design and then I had to order it. And that takes, you know, four to five weeks. And then there's shipping on top of that. And like so like you do, I mean, even just for a pin, you have to plan way know. ahead. Yeah. yeah. So it's a lot. Books? Yeah. Did we did we get everything? I think we did. Okay. So I I've been doing good on my um yearly. I'm up to fifty books, so I'm like on track. Nice. But um, read a bunch since the last time. Not many were worth like. I mean, looking through like I think if I finish something like the next day, if we taped, I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna talk about this. But like now that you can mm -hmm. like look back at like fifteen books, you're like, oh, I don't need to talk about mm -hmm. all of these. So um. The ones that stood out, um, Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by mm. Benjamin Allier Sains. Um, I just, I'm putting the YouTube link um, in our notes. Um, at the library, I um, teamed up with Eric from our youth services department and we did LGBTQIA books um, for teens. Mm. And we did a half hour on our picks and um, he had so many picks that I want to read now. And then I read this in book form. He did the audiobook, and Lynn Manuel Miranda read it and he said it was awesome. Mm. So there's a sequel now. So now I have to do the sequel. Um, but it won like every award. It came out a few years ago. It won like every single award you can win for a teen book. Hmm. And there's a reason because it's charming and heartfelt and mm. just, um, 
the relationship between the two boys, they, um, you know, kind of like strike up this friendship um, and it follows them through like some like tough times mm-hmm. and oh, it, it, it's it's like lovely and um, like nice about like even though life is hard, you can appreciate like small things in your life that you love and oh, it's great. So, um, so yeah. Um, and then, so I really recommend that one. <laughs> out of the probably you know, like 10 to 20 teen books I read that was like the standout. Mm. What, uh, what genre is it? Um, teen. YA. Sorry, my brain just turned off. <laughs> I, is it like, is it fantasy? Sorry, like historical? It's, um, I'd say... Contemporary? Yeah, contemporary okay. drama. Yeah. Okay. It's, um, yeah. Because the title makes it sort of sound like it could be a fantasy. It Definitely. Yeah. What is it called? Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. I could totally like see that being like who a, you are. Yeah. yeah, like a space teen. Totally. With ray guns and stuff. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oops. What have I been reading? So I feel like I'm finally out of my torturous reading <laughs> slump. <laughs> that was horrible. Um, I've started, like, I've... I don't know. I've, I'm, I'm, I've been reading a lot of, like, heavy... Not heavy, but like dense nonfiction lately. And so the books that I'm reading like take me a while, but they're really good. So like, um, I feel like the one that got me out of my slump was um, this book about Neanderthal archeology span and like the, this new science surrounding um, like these ancient peoples or whatever and how they're like, like, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't really have like DNA was just starting to come into its own. And so like in the last 20 years, there've been all this new information about uh, Neanderthal peoples and um, like just because of the DNA technology and, you know, different testing and whatever that's um, that's changed recently. So so this book that I read um, was called Kindred Neanderthal Life Love, Death, and Art, and it's by Rebecca Rag Sykes. Um, man, that, like if you if you need something like slow paced for bedtime, but that's like really interesting, this one was freaking fascinating. Um, I had no idea what complex people and like culture Neanderthals were. Like I didn't really know anything. Like you know, we have in our brains that like the stereotype of a neanderthal is like this like hulking caveman and like mm-hmm. me eat meat and kill a woman and like whatever and they've got a club and they're fighting saber-toothed tigers but like that's not what it is at all that's there's highly intelligent and um they developed like really complex societies and familial you know uh units and yes they were hunting animals with rocks and sticks but like they were so much more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, the science, too. So, like, there's a lot about, like, the culture and whatever. And there's also a lot about the science and the actual archaeology that they've been doing. And, like, one thing that stuck out to me was how much they, like, scientists are able to learn from just, like, a single tooth. You know, a, like, a fossilized tooth. They can test the enamel. And they can test, you know, like, the the carbon dating. And they can they can figure out like what this person ate for like every meal because it, it it like the chemicals or whatever uh form in your teeth like rings in a tree kind of and like make i don't know you can like test the layers so there's that they can tell where this person lived based on the minerals in the water that they drank that like deposited in their teeth and like i'm just, just like crazy stuff that I'm like, I don't think this is real. I think that they're just guessing and whatever, but <laughs> this is a really interesting book. I downloaded it. Oh, good. Yeah, it was yeah, it was funny. fascinating. Uh, it's dense and it's slow. It took me a while to read it, but like I said, it's, it's really interesting. I wasn't going to say anything about it, but then I read this book called 
the last Neanderthal. And I didn't write down who the author was because I didn't, I wasn't going to say anything, but it's like this imagined, um, it's a fiction of an imagined fiction of the last Neanderthal and what her life would have been like and, you know, her relationships and whatever. So that was also really good. I should probably, I'll put it in the show notes. But it was fun to read those two, like, back to back. That's nice. Oh, do you want to see a cover of Kindred? Yeah. I did download one, and then I got so excited. Oh, my gosh. Ta-da! I have been reading more nonfiction and then, like, started, like, ten books all at a time. Mm -hmm. So I haven't finished anything, um, but I'm in the middle. Then I was looking at, like oh, what were, like, nonfiction titles from, like, the past few years that people really like? So um, I'm in the middle of a bunch of them. So send me recommendations. But um, my dad used to read a lot about space and consciousness, and I got a few of those. I'm in the middle of an audiobook that's really interesting about how the world might end. Great. Um, that sounds stressful. I know. <laughs> I, I, yes, exactly. So that one's on the back burner right now. But um, so anyway, um, but this one I started... And um, kind of getting a lot out of it. Like, it's um, Tara Schuster, Buy Yourself the Fucking Lilies. Okay. Which is about kind of um, her experiences and um, kind of the title is about, like, self-care and um, being kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so she just goes through, like, her experiences and, like, her childhood and um, that she had, like, a real reliance on weed in her hmm. 20s and not dealing with what she needed to deal with. And um, so there's a few things. I'm a little more than halfway right now. Um, but it was good. I, like, sat back. I'm pretty good at self-care. Um, but I um, got a fancy perfume sampler for myself mm -hmm. and um, went and got, like, a few. My sunglasses were kind of worn out, so I got, like, some sunglasses. And so I'm trying to, like take some time to take care of myself um there was a few um the biggest thing I took away I'm not a very good like writer and it's never come as easy to me as like reading I can like read no problem but like writing is more difficult for me so I've never been like a journaler but she really you know was saying how if you can like write a few pages in the morning it like gets out all of that stuff that's like stuck in your head and like repeats all day so you get it out on the page and then you can kind of even look back and see like what's been bothering you, what you need to work hmm. on, things like that. So I've been doing that for the past few days hmm. and it's good. I, I think it's just one of those things that I, it's like, yeah, it's, you have to take time to do it. And of course you're going to write about stuff that's bothering you. So it's a little like difficult stuff. So it's like, do I really want to like start my day? But it is true where you're kind of like, oh, this, these things are bothering me. So now I got to go do this. And it like, yeah, almost makes them not seem as like overwhelming. So we'll see if I can keep that up. But cool. I good think for that you. was good advice. Um, there was, she said, um, that which you do not deal with deals with you, which mm. is so true. And if you haven't found out for yourself because you're too young or in a certain place in your life, you'll find out if you've you know, start taking care of yourself or start therapy or stop doing self-destructive things <laughs> like drinking or drugs that you'll find out. Um, it's and coming then, for all of us. I know. <laughs> um, and then laughter is the enemy of self-loathing, which I really like to rip that down to. Laughter is the enemy of self-loathing. Oh, nice. Um, That's your deep thought for I know. this episode. I know. Um... And it's, I'm kind of on the part where she's talking about drinking now and we'll see how it ends. It's kind of like she quit weed and then realized how much she was drinking. Hmm. So, you know, the like she had gone to a doctor's visit and he said, how much do you drink per week? And she said, well, I went to the beach on Sunday, so I had four glasses of wine. And then and she was like tallying and it was mm. like too much and she was embarrassed. But then she was kind of saying now she has rules for like this and... So we'll see. I think if you are a person that's an addiction personality, the rules aren't going to help you. The rules will help for a week. And it's not a solution for a lot of people. So I, I want to just give that as, a, you know, part of it that maybe for some people that is a way 
to go and you can be like, I can only have two cocktails when I go out. Um, but for other personalities, that is not a solution. That was so not We'll for see me. how the end of that chapter goes. But I'm thinking that's, that, that might work for some people, but for others, it doesn't. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I did get a lot of, out, out of that. Cool. I'm also reading a self-care book. Um, I'm reading Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle by Emily and Amelia Nagoski. Um, so this book I have been meaning to read forever. Um, Emily also wrote, you might've heard of it, uh, the book Come As You Are. It's about like female sexuality, which has also been on my list to read, but I haven't gotten into it yet. Um, and I'm listening to the audiobook, and it's read by the authors and they are fucking delightful. Mm. I met them uh, in a past life in 2019 when I went to the Romance Writers of America National Conference in New York City. Uh, I did one of their workshops on burnout um, and it was right when this book came out and I've been meaning to read it since then and just like now finally getting around to it. Um, they are delightful humans. This book is hilarious. Uh, it's got, um, so the, the, like, the whole point is we all experience burnout. Here's how to deal with your stress so that you can experience less burnout and less, you know, less stress. Um, and, and they give you like practical things that you could like practical tips that you can do right now today to like deal with your stress so that it's not like sitting and festering in your body and making you sick and making you angry and whatever. Um, which is perfect for uh, a post row world uh, country um, in which we are all enraged and everything is the worst. We all need to deal with our stress. So read this book um, and you can learn how. Um, one of which is doing creative stuff like knitting, like drawing, like um, writing, whatever, whatever your hobby is, uh, sewing, you know, hobbies, you've heard of them. Um, and the other, another good one is just like laughing with friends, like laughing is the enemy. What was it? Laughing is the enemy of self-loathing. Yeah, yeah. Like that's just, just laughing alone, you know, can help release um, some of that stress. So what I love about this book is that it's, I was like, I, I think the reason I put it off reading it for so long was because I'm like, oh my God, like this is going to be so much science. It's going to be really dense and hard to understand. And it's not, it's written by women for women and it's funny and it's relatable and they use all these pop culture references to like illustrate their points. Like they talk about books and movies and Disney princesses. Like di every chapter has a Disney princess in it. Um, and uh, so in the in the audiobook, uh, they always talk like every time they mention the patriarchy, it's always the patriarchy. Ugh. <laughs> and apparently that's in I'm not I haven't uh, looked at this uh, the book with my eyes, but it's in this book too. every every time they mention the patriarchy in parentheses is ugh at the end. Um, it's just really like an accessible easy listen and it's i think the audiobook's like seven hours um so it's a pretty pretty quick one uh and i am sad that i put it off for so long because i'm really enjoying it this was our book uh in my discord um book club this was the book for june and i don't i think only one person actually finished it on time so i gotta finish it this week but very enjoyable um on the strain of just like having something silly in your life. <laughs> um, I read a few monster romances and I won't like give you the plots of all of them. Um, they're all hot. They're all <laughs> bizarre. Um, I understand if it's not your thing. Now that I kind of am reading them, I'm like, oh, well, I kind of got to try the one with, like, the Kraken now. Right. So I have three. I will go through them. <laughs> Katie Robert, the dragon's bride. Um, he's, like, it, he's he's a dragon. And, he has packs. Um, yeah, skip ahead 30 seconds if you don't want to hear us. He has two dicks. What? <laughs> so. Uh, and I love Katie Robert. <laughs> In all her uh, form. So um, her mafia ones I love. I was going to say, I recognize oh, her name. Gosh. So um, I've, I've done a lot of Katie Roberts. So I, I 
pretty much. Actually, I, I rarely, because I work at the library, pre-order books or any. I pre-ordered this, like, when she announced it. Because I was like, <laughs> okay, well, yes, to that. Um, so then, um, looking around, Lillian Lark writes some monster ones. So I did um, Deceived by the Gargoyles, which, um, he's just kind of dark, you can't see him. Um, but there's uh, three gargoyles Uh-oh. that she becomes entangled with, and they're entangled with each other. Uh-oh. <laughs> and then enjoyed that, and it was, like, so quick. Um, her other one <laughs> is stalked by the kraken, and he has tentacles and lots, <laughs> lots of them, and just, I don't need to explain any further. Just... If you know, you have any interest, just uh, give it a go, because you, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh my gosh, so, yes. Uh, okay. My last one, and I'm only halfway through it, I'm reading it right now. It's called Mary B. And it's by Catherine Chen. And it is a Pride and Prejudice retelling from the perspective of Mary Bennett. (laughs) Mary! Uh, (laughs) The tagline is, sometimes wallflowers are the most intriguing guests at the party. And so this book, like, imagines if, imagines the, so, like, they, there's a part of it where they retell, they, like, go through the events of Pride and Prejudice as viewed from Mary's, um, point of view like there's a whole bunch of stuff with Mr. Collins because you know Mary just like loves him and she thinks that she's going to be the one to marry him and you know all this stuff and (gasps) so sad Uh, and then there's also like the author imagines um, like a pre Pride and Prejudice so like what happens in their childhood um, and then relates it to the events in Pride and Prejudice and then the second half of the book is after Pride and Prejudice. And so like where I'm at right now is um, Mary is visiting the Darcy's uh, at Pemberley and Elizabeth is pregnant with her, the first little Darcy. Um, but it's all from, it's like from Mary's perspective. So you like the, you know, Mr. Darcy's there and Elizabeth is there and like all the, you know, other Pride and Prejudice characters, but it's, they're not the focus. It's all about Mary. Um, and she, like, hearing her perspective is pretty cool. Uh, she's a, an interesting character. And it's funny, you know, because she's, like, the ugly one, the awkward one. The She has no talent at the pianoforte piano. or whatever. And, like, you know, she'll, like, be talking about, you're like, yeah, I know I'm, like, not that good at piano but i i enjoy it like it's fine and it makes my sisters crazy like so how else am i supposed to torment them so it's just like funny and delightful and slow paced and romantic and just very soothing as you would imagine a pride and prejudice retelling would be and i've got look what you (laughs) Uh uh-huh yes so i have a pride and prejudice retelling (laughs) unequal affection by laura s ormison and we I didn't say, even plan this. I, it's crazy. I picked it because of the cover. I mean, I picked it because of the cover. I picked this one because of the cover. Like, come on. <laughs> and the best thing, and this hooked me too. Um, this is a retelling. It's, you know, about Elizabeth and Darcy. It's if she had accepted him after the first crappy proposal he gave her, where he insulted her. And she felt like she had to do it for her family. So she accepts him mm. while still pretty like not into him Mm -hmm. and then their courtship and they go back to her family to announce it and it's it's good it's really really yeah i you told me about that like when we were recording and i'm like oh i gotta read that so i i really enjoyed it um and you know he kind of because they didn't have the blow up he kind of didn't understand a lot of how he was acting so they go back Hmm. and you know, we're kind of having interactions with people and she has to be like, hey, you can't act like, you can't act like this. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how you think this is appropriate. It's good. So. Love it. Yay. That is too funny. We both had a self-help book and a Pride and Prejudice And then retelling. I talked to a colleague. We had a thing where we had to like talk about, I don't know, like a training and we had to talk about, so I, and I was talking about this book and I had a colleague and he was like, I've read a bunch of Pride and Prejudice retellings, and so he gave me two that I want to read. Mm. So. 
Have you read Death at Pemberley? I think I didn't, but I saw the show. Oh yeah, I forgot they the made show a show about it. Is excellent. I can't remember if I it's watched. So it's good. like it's not a show, right? It's like a mini series. It's a mini series. Yeah, I think I did watch it. The book is great too. I think okay. I listened to the audio and it was just the casting. It's like of the a show. Is... Yeah, it's like if a murder happens at at Pemberley and then like you know they have to solve it or whatever. It's really good. Yeah. And it's exactly what you would hope for from a Pride and Prejudice murder mystery. Like, it's just just perfect. Soothing, comforting. Well, Dottie. She's sleeping. It's really cute. So, <laughs> she has the softest head. It's so good. Her pet little pet, that's... Touch her little pad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. Her little pads are so sorry. Mm-hmm. All right. We have not figured out when we're going to record in July yet. Um, we're trying to do one episode through, that, through the summer. Summer. This is kind of slow. Um, so we will see you when we see you. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks for hanging out. We always appreciate you. Uh, make sure you um, subscribe and follow us on Instagram. Um, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Yep. And that's it. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.